Thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of your worship experience this morning. It's truly an honor to be here with you. It is a really nice break for me from all of the binge watching of TV shows that I've been doing lately. Um, since we're still kind of in quarantine, I I'm still just sitting around watching a lot of TV and I've been able to catch up on one of my favorite shows called The Good Place. Um, it is absolutely hysterical. Um, it's all based on one concept of heaven. And there's this one character in it called Chidi who's a moral philosophy professor and he reminds me so much of the Pharisees at the start of our story today, where he gets caught in these moral dilemmas of should we do this thing or this thing? Is it okay to lie if the lie is to protect others? And he just gets stuck in these thought cycles and everyone keeps reminding him that this is why everyone hates moral philosophy professors because he gets so caught up in the rules, in the what is right, that he isn't able to act and to live and to love, right? So while he is just an absolutely phenomenal character and I highly recommend that you watch The Good Place if you haven't already done so, just maybe wait until after um, worship is over and, and then go watch it. But it reminds me so much of the religious debates that Jesus finds himself in, where people are stuck trying to decide which is the most important rule to follow. And it's really, really limiting on their faith. Because when you're stuck trying to figure out if you should be following the rule around obeying your mother and father more so than following the rule about not stealing, you're stuck in the situation where mom and dad say, hey, go ahead, go steal the thing over there. And then you're like, ah, but that's a rule too. What do I do? It's really hard, right? We get stifled by all of the rules in it that we find. You see, it's like trying to learn a new game to play. And where you get so caught up in how to play the game that the game isn't even fun anymore. And it takes all the joy right out of it. So these Pharisees, these religious leaders, these lawyers, these really deep thinkers come to Jesus and they say, man, help us out. What do we have to do? What's the bare minimum that we have to do? What's the easiest way for us to understand how to be good religious folks? without getting stuck in these thought cycles. And Jesus responds very simply. He says to love, love God with all that you are. Don't let the rules stop you. Don't let these limitations hold you back. Love with your whole self. Don't just give it partial attention. Don't just try to find the easy way out. Don't just check the box of having the online worship service playing in the background while you're actually folding laundry or while you're actually going through 
the list of all the things that you need to do later today and just making that to mental to-do list. Be fully present to God. Be fully present to the Holy Spirit at work in your life. And when you do that, you can't help but to do the second piece. Because when you are fully loving God, then that love is going to naturally overflow into loving God's creation, your neighbor. If you want to really get a great example of love overflowing. I wish I could just hold up a picture for you of how my parents have decorated their house. To this day, they have all of the art projects that my brother and I did in elementary school on display for everyone to see. And let me assure you that my brother and I, we are not at all the next Georgia O'Keeffe or Picasso or Michelangelo. Mm -mm. No, that stuff isn't pretty. It's just not. But my parents' love for us overflowed into the love of things that we created. How much more should our love of God overflow to God's incredible creation? to the earth itself, and to all of us who live here. Hmm. I think we can look to our, young, our youngest generations right now to see incredible examples of this. You see, it is our young people who are standing up for their queer classmates and being fierce allies for them, showing them that it is okay to be exactly who they are. It is the young people who are out in the streets protesting, saying that black lives matter, saying that they love their neighbor exactly as they are. But it's also the smaller ways that we see love for others, love for neighbor. It's the knitting circle who create prayer shawls for those who are in the hospital or for those who just need a reminder of love and care. It's the people who went out and bought groceries for their neighbor when it wasn't safe to go to the grocery store. Sometimes a love for the neighbor looks like chalk, sidewalk chalk art, statements of, you've got this, you are loved, keep going, persevere. That is love for your neighbor. But the third piece of what Jesus said, you kind of have to peel back the layers to see, because Jesus says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You know, the good lawyers that he's talking to will definitely be able to tell you that that presupposes that you love yourself. That you are kind to yourself. That you respect yourself. For some of us, that might be the hardest piece of this. Because while we are really good at lifting other people up, sometimes we are our own worst critic. While we will acknowledge that somebody is working 
themselves to the bone and they need to rest. We don't give ourselves permission to rest ourselves. It's the teenage girl who looks in the mirror and can pick apart every piece of her appearance, but it's the first to tell her friend how beautiful they are on the inside and out. We forget that we are wonderfully and fearfully made. So which piece do you need to focus on in your life this week? Is there a way that you can be loving God just a little bit better? To be just a little bit more present to the holy in your life? Is there a neighbor that you need to be more kind to? Is there a way that you can step up in your community to love better? Or do you need to slow down and give yourself permission to rest, to be still, to say an affirmation to yourself that you are wonderfully and fearfully made, that you are loved? that you are important. So what's the greatest commandment? It's not about limitations. It's not being held, about being held back from the rules. It's about being set free to love to love boldly and to be authentic in who you are. 